Good morning, Vietnam. It's your host, Hao Tran, on another episode of Vietnam Innovators. Today, we have a guest coming all the way from Dubai. It's yeah. his first time in Vietnam. Yeah, it's my first time. First here. time in Vietnam, but it's not his last. We have Fyodor of Chinnikov. He's the Dodo brand CEO and founder. Dodo is a relatively new brand to Vietnam. You might recognize the pizza locations that they have here. Uh, just a handful of restaurants now, but potentially hundreds more. Let's see. Um, but they're all over the world, including Russia, the Middle East, uh, Central Asia, and probably a few other places I don't know, but we'll find Africa. out. Africa. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of emerging market uh, destinations for Dodo brands. It's not just a pizza shop, though. It's much more than that. And we'll hear from Fyodor to share about that. Welcome to Vietnam, Fyodor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and, to be here. and welcome to the studio. Um, before we get into the whole podcast, we're going to do some rapid fire questions. Okay. So these rapid fire questions are very short and the answers are also very short. Okay. And there's no wrong answer. Okay. So just go at it and hopefully people like it. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? Yes, definitely. What surprises you about Vietnam? Traffic. 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 <laughs> It's not that bad. Vietnam is the first country in Southeast Asia to have a Dodo pizza. Why is that? Because we found great partners here and they promoted these uh, opportunities in this country. What's your proudest innovation at Dodo Pizza? Uh, I think our IT system, because we are not just a pizza company, we have a tech company as well. What separates Dodo Pizza from its competitors? The main feature of our company is transparency. We are very transparent for customers, for uh, everybody, for shareholders, investors. What's the biggest challenge your business is facing right now? We try to reinvent uh, pizza. It's a very famous product. I think competition. Mm -hmm. We need to make something new in this old market. What motivates you? Creation. Uh, on a Sunday at 10 a.m., where would you be and what would you be doing? I will go sport. Sports? Yeah. Very good. Very active life. Very good. All right, let's get into the podcast. So, Fyodor, uh, first question for you is, uh, and you just mentioned yourself, it's uh, pizza is a language. It's an old kind of product uh, that people are aware of already. Uh, whether, you're, whether or not you're a healthy eater or you enjoy meat, there's a pizza for just about everybody. So, you, Fyodor, what's your favorite pizza topping combination. Ah, Let's okay, just start okay. with that. So uh, I like uh, very simple recipes, mm. simple combinations uh, of ingredients. And my favorite pizzas are like margarita or cheesy pizza. Mm, okay, so very simple. Yeah. So Fyodor, we've got a pizza delivery from Dodo Pizza. It's my first time trying the pizza. So what I need from you is to kind of share and explain this particular one that we have here. Okay. And what am I tasting? I'll try, I'll okay. try. So what do we have here? So that is our uh, classic pizza, you can see our uh, dough, but uh, in every country, in every market, we have different recipes. Mm. Pizza is a great product because uh, it's like a constructor. Okay. It's, uh, it could be adapted easily to tastes, local tastes. Yeah. And uh, for example, uh, companies, uh, concepts in our market uh, have different strategies. Mm. And our strategy is to adapt product. So we come to the market with our technology, I mm. mean, technology of managing business, but uh, menus are different in every country. For example, okay. in Nigeria, we have pizzas with bananas. Bananas. Yes. Okay. Vietnam, we, our partners uh, have made a big, uh, uh, big work uh, for adapting recipes mm. to local tastes. For example, we have a lot of pizzas with uh, seafood. Mm. Maybe Vietnamese menu of Dodo Pizza is Uh, has the biggest uh, seafood uh, okay. <laughs> list of pizzas. Yeah, great. So why don't we try this? Yeah. Um, looks like we have bacon. I think it's uh, our classic recipe, like oh, Dodo. Okay. Yeah. So this is found everywhere in the yeah, world. It's, yeah, it's like global global recipe. Okay. Mm, okay. I can say <laughs> it tastes the same, and mm. it's good. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think um, thin crust, a little bit chewy. Um, the toppings are very generous. Um, yeah, what's not to like? <laughs> I don't know. So consistency, that's obviously very important. Yeah, of course. I mm. think that consistency of quality and service is the biggest challenge in mm. our business. Okay. Because uh, sometimes people 
think that premium restaurants and QSR business are the same business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But QSR business is uh, more close to retail or FMCG business because you need to to scale your business and you need to provide consistency of quality in every pizza store, for example. Mm -hmm. And you need to operate hundreds of stores. And uh, technologies help a lot in managing uh, chain business mm -hmm. when you have a lot of hundreds of stores. Why don't we just start with how you started it? What was the inspiration for a business like that? So I started uh, our company just uh, 12 years ago in a small city, in a small distant city in Russia, northern city. And uh, at that time I was a failed entrepreneur, mm. but uh, I dreamed big and uh, I thought uh, I tried to find an idea which could be scaled uh, globally. Mm. So and uh, I decided to combine uh, just these old businesses, pizza delivery with technologies to create uh, something we call uh, smart pizzeria. So that was uh, my idea. And uh, uh, after Dodo P uh, before Dodo Pizza, uh, I didn't know how to make pizza. I didn't know how uh, to manage restaurants. So I mm. went to St. Petersburg, it's a big city in uh, Russia, and okay. started to work in uh, QSR businesses, QSR restaurants, quick right. service right. restaurants to, uh, to, learn. to study, to study, to see inside okay. uh, how it operates. And why did you tackle the pizza business specifically? Because as you mentioned, everybody's aware of it already. Yeah. They're probably very well-established brands in that space already. Why, why pizza? Well, I did it intentionally because uh, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Mm. I just wanted to make it better. So it's very difficult to create a new demand, new mm. product. Right. You need a lot of resources to switch uh, people choices. Uh, so my idea was to to get to to take uh, old product mm -hmm. and combine it with uh, something new. And in this case, something new was the the, the customer experience, the technology, yeah. the yeah. speed, but also the consistency, yeah. I guess you could say. Dodo Brands, tech company, creates digital solutions, IoT, big data, IT, these are a lot of different words. Yeah. Does the average consumer know about that or is the objective to actually have them not know anything where they feel like they're just going into a pizza shop and they care about the food experience? Walk us through that customer journey. Of course, we sell our food experience, hmm. our whole experience, I mean, service, and uh, emotions which uh, pizza gives people. Of course, uh, customers uh, see our mobile app, mm -hmm. the, and um, digital experience is a part of, uh, of the product, mm. the whole product, but it doesn't need uh, to show mm. uh, technologies, uh, in, inside technologies to, to our customers. In markets like Russia, the Middle East, Africa, Central Asia, and now Vietnam, does the average let's say food and beverage, quick service outlet and in, in have technology? Of in, course. Yeah, of but course. Is, is it, but uh, uh, there is a difference. Uh, so we made uh, technologies uh, part of our franchise mm. from scratch. From day one. Yeah. Yes. And uh, for example, companies like McDonald's, for example, which mm. uh, started f uh, franchising system yeah. a lot of uh, years ago. Right like 50 or 60 years ago, they didn't have such solutions to control operations mm -hmm. in a big, in a big retail business. So we decided to uh, create a digital franchise from scratch. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are two key differences uh, which uh, differ us from other companies, from other information systems, for example. Uh, the first is uh, we call it uh, co uh, coordination of competencies, it means that we uh, develop our system inside our company. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity to uh, change processes uh, inside pizzerias, inside our business. So, and the second is the internet. Uh, we develop our system as website. Mm -hmm. So you can easily uh, open pizzeria in our system like account in Facebook. Mm -hmm. So we, we can... Uh, install uh, tablets, uh, iPads in uh, the kitchen and can digitalize even small operation. Mm -hmm. So we can control everything online. We can compare data online and it's very easy, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. So that is the uh, main difference. Dodo Brands plans to open 150 stores in Vietnam. 
that's quite a few. Yeah. So to give you a little context, uh, the other pizza chains here that are not as tech savvy, perhaps, but have been here for a long time, they don't have anything close to that. Or if they have, they've taken a long time to get there. Yeah. So my question for you is, what's driving that aggressive strategy, and what challenges do you have? Do you see, and how do you think that you'll overcome them to hit that? Yeah. So we see a huge potential in, uh, in this market mm -hmm. in Vietnam. So uh, because it's a huge population, the economy is growing. So and the middle class is growing. And of course, uh, pizza is very famous uh, product. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not like traditional food for uh, Vietnam, but uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real product brand. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, everybody knows what is pizza. Yes, so yeah. we, we don't need to teach people. So, and uh, 150 stores, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to find a proper model mm -hmm. for this uh, specific market. We need to find proper uh, locations, for example. We mm -hmm. need to have uh, strong uh, business development strategy. We need to build a brand here. So it uh, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be easy, easy journey for us, and, uh, but we, we are ready to invest our energy, uh, a lot of time to this market because we see big future here. Fyodor, your, your fourth pizza in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, quick fact here, quickly became the top earner in the entire chain. Why do you think this location was so successful and how do you think the success can be replicated throughout the country? Yeah, uh, when we come to any new market, we first of all we need to try. We want to try to find proper model mm. to scale. Okay. Our uh, first stores in uh, Ho Chi Minh are located in the center, in the big, uh, expensive locations. But mm. first, uh, fourth store is located in a suburb. Okay. And uh, where there are not so many competitors. Mm. So maybe we can we find a proper model to scale because it, uh, we need to have a uh, profitable unit economy mm. to start, uh, to start uh, scaling. So you believe that every location opening from now on doesn't need to rely just on economies of scale. It should stand alone in itself as a profitable contributor to the chain. Okay, it's your first visit to Vietnam. You are the founder of the entire brand ecosystem. What's your ultimate goal for the company? So my, uh, I can't say that it's goal, it's a uh, it's dream, mm. it's a vision. We want to build a uh, global food tech company. Global food company, yes, okay. Yes, I can say food tech company. Three years ago, we decided uh, to go uh, to another product. Mm -hmm. We already developed a big uh, digital platform for our pizza business. We combined uh, pizza business with technology. So, and we decided uh, to start uh, inside our company new startups. Now we have uh, coffee shop concept, donor kebab concept. And uh, I see our company as a uh, global uh, food tech company which mm. uh, developed uh, different uh, concepts based on uh, franchise and technology okay. in partnership with uh, entrepreneurs with different cultures uh, in from different cultures from different markets different countries okay so that is my T tell dream. me about the other two brands that you have within dodo yeah. where, where are they currently do you see them coming to a place like vietnam i did a little research about the coffee yeah. one especially it reminded me of uh, the coffee shops in china where uh, everyone does like wechat pay and yeah. everything is is you can order in advance and you don't even have to interact with the barista actually it's it's really quick service tell me about those yeah. two concepts and if you think that they can apply in a place like Vietnam. i strongly believe that our coffee shop coffee shop concept uh, could be scaled uh, around the world mm. i believe that it could be successful when i started dota i didn't have a lot of resources i, mm. I, ha I had nothing mm. When we started uh, our coffee shop concept, we had uh, developers, have resources, we have uh, um, resources to invest uh, in long-term way. Coffee is a unique product because uh, this product has uh, the the most frequent uh, the most frequency mm -hmm. in the market. Mm -hmm. You can buy uh, coffee uh, just twice a day. Right. So and we. Uh, see an opportunity to digital, digitalize this routine process 
because if you buy a coffee twice a day, mm -hmm. you can use mobile app. If you use mobile app, we can find value, how to make experience of this routine uh, more convenient, better for customers. So, and uh, we develop now a like, digital coffee shop. Mm -hmm. We try uh, to have 100% uh, uh, online okay. in the, from our mobile app. We try to convince customers to use mobile app. Mm. So you started this concept in Russia, yeah. I believe. Were people used to using apps to order food and drink? Not, not delivery necessarily, but... We just, for example, now we have about 15, uh, our 15 coffee shops in Russia, in Kazakhstan, in Dubai. Okay. And we've just opened a new, new, new coffee shop we, where we have about 99% folders mm. via mobile app. 99%, 99. wow. Because we organize space of this coffee shop to make this uh, digital experience uh, more convenient mm. than uh, traditional. Okay. So we, do, we, we don't have uh, cash desk. We just have special table with uh, special screens right. where our um, baristas put uh, uh, drinks, mm. uh, coffee, tea, food. So when it's ready and uh, customers which ordered them in mobile app could uh, take it and they see the numbers of order or their names and right, right. screens. And the space is very open. We don't have like... Uh, like Walls border between and, yeah. uh, cashiers, okay. like uh, baristas and right, uh, right. customers. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, and this experience looks very convenient, very understandable. Mm. Uh, that's why we have such results. And uh, digital gives us a lot of opportunities to interact with uh, customers. To uh, We try to make coffee shop for every day. Mm. So we want to offer our customers, our guests, every day new product. And we make very deep customization because you can customize your product mm. in digital uh, more easy than in real life because you don't need to, mm. to tell baristas what recipes you want. So you can uh, adjust your, your, your drink mm -hmm. in a mobile app. You can choose, uh, for example, milk from uh, eight uh, kinds of milk, okay. from cow milk, oat milk, and so, so on. Yeah. Fascinating. And, and I, I really like hearing that you're approaching it from an emerging market kind of uh, angle, too, because um, we think of these technologies being in uh, developed, super developed countries uh, where payments are all made mobile and everyone's got an iPhone, let's say. Mm -hmm. But this is this is great. Well, best of luck on that. And hopefully we get to see some of those in Vietnam. I mean, we're seeing a Dodo pizza already, but hopefully a couple others. Let's talk about the company culture a little bit. I think uh, you obviously started this company in Russia. It's now all over the world. Um, the cultures can get a bit tough to, I guess you could say, bring here, bring there, bring it over cross border. Um, what are the key lessons you've learned about building the foundation of the company culture and then translating that to your partners, such as the one that you have here in Vietnam to make everything happen locally? Uh, as I said, we are a very transparent company. So when I started uh, Dodo Pizza, I decided to make something like a reality show for my business. Okay. I uh, started a blog on the internet mm. and uh, I wrote everything about business, I mean about sales figures, about my profit, about my losses, about my dreams, about my plans, and about my values. I said I would be transparent for everyone. And uh, this transparency gave us a lot, gave a lot, a lot of promotion because mm. uh, it, it was a great advertisement. Because it was fresh, something new. Yes, and uh, and that transparency uh, attracted people who shared the same values. Yeah, we found colleagues, uh, partners, and. Uh, and that was a basement of our culture. Oh, so they kind of found you online. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. This business oh. was uh, it grew through social media because, because of social media, because wow. of the, the internet. So people because followed your writings about the business you were building from five, six, seven years ago, however long it's been. Yes. Over time, as the business has expanded, someone from, let's say, Vietnam was like, wow, okay, I, let's reach out. And yes, yes. And oh. it's interesting then when I, I visit. Uh, our partners mm. in different countries, mm. I see the same values, mm. see the same people. Mm. And uh, I can say that even people, are d cultures are different, but there are 
so common. Yeah. Because values are values. Mm, like Interesting. Uh, honesty, transparency, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, wish to make uh, great products, great business, great service. Mm. It's, it's it's common. Okay, that's truly a cross-border business. Connected us. Amazing. All right. In the context of Vietnamese entrepreneurs, so there's this trend where Vietnamese big companies, small companies, uh, they've grown fantastic businesses here locally, and they're trying to go out now. What are some lessons, aside from the one that you just shared, right, um, that you can share with them, that you can offer to them in terms of, I want to be growing a global business. How do I do that as kind of a niche country? Mm -hmm. Russia is a very niche country. Vietnam is, how do I go global? When I started business uh, in Secret of Car and started to write in my blog that I will make global business, a lot mm -hmm. of people s said that I'm crazy, mm. that uh, I can't dream like that. So first of all, I, I, I think that we need to uh, break all limitations in our minds that we couldn't make. Uh, global business mm. and uh, now it's interesting that it's very unusual that global pizza franchise is developed from Russia right. or started in Russia because mm. it's uh, it's unusual because there are American QSR companies mm. European QSR companies Russian I can't name one actually you're the first so <laughs> <laughs> congratulations yeah so yeah. you need to break these limitations yep. in, in mind mm. and then uh, you need to you need to focus on a great product. Mm. So we understand that uh, we don't uh, have such maybe uh, starting good starting position as, uh, for example, American companies for doing global business. Mm. And the only way to achieve success in the global mm. market is yeah. to make so great brand product mm. yep. that customers could choose it, even they think that it's very unusual that mm. this product is came from this country. Right. I can uh, uh, make example of, for example, Toyota or your Japanese business. When Toyota uh, came to the US market, I think I, I read that a lot of managers even didn't know English, mm. but they made such great product mm -hmm. in terms of quality, prices, that uh, they could, they can take share in this market, mm. very competitive market, so yeah. great product, mm. and focus, maybe on focus on, on the product. Okay, so fantastic, great, great lesson there. I think, uh, thank you for sharing that, Fyodor. Um, Dodo Brands, you have a strategy, it's, it's called Plan 333. There's actually a beer called 333 <laughs> in, Viet in Vietnamese, uh, so not to be confused. <laughs> to this try. is plan, not beer. You want to take the company public in early 2024, yeah. which is only six months away. Um, first question is, when did you found Dodo Brands? When, when did you found the company, start it? Uh, 12 years ago. 12 years ago, yes, okay, so 12, 12 13 years taking now to IPO. Did you, did you think that you would IPO this company? Our plans have changed. Okay. Yeah, because of uh, political situation mm -hmm. now, we planned IPO in far, far future. So okay. It's still our mission. It's still, I want to make our company public someday. Uh, it's interesting that we had very interesting investment story. I didn't manage to attract capital in uh, professional funds in Russia. Okay. Nobody believed in. Uh, in our big idea because when I started to attract capital, I mm -hmm. just had 13, uh, uh, 13 pizzerias. Okay. And we started the biggest crowdfunding case in Russian history. I just started to, uh, to raise capital from social media. Mm. And a lot of ordinary people like engineers, uh, developers, managers, entrepreneurs, small entrepreneurs invested in our company. I want to talk about some factors related to the F&B industry. We've talked a lot about technology, keeping things simple, um, not reinventing products, just making a good product. Um, there's a trend, though, in the industry about, uh, let's say, sustainability, the environment. There's a term called ESG. I'm not sure if you guys have practiced that at the company. Um, how does Dodo Pizza approach that? Is it does it matter to you guys? Does it matter to your customers? Maybe you can comment on that. It matters a lot for us because uh, everything we do in our business, we I can say that we do it mm -hmm. sincerely. Okay. Now we have a lot of small uh, and not a small uh, projects in our company uh, to 
which is focused on sustainability. For example, we launched uh, six months ago in Dubai uh, the first case in, uh, in our history of using uh, reusable pizza boxes. Mm. It sounds like it's simple. It's a plastic, uh, plastic box mm. uh, for for pizza, but for our business, it's a really it's a, it's a very big project because we need to adjust a lot of processes to make it profitable, to, mm. to make it efficient, and it works now. Uh, about twenty percent of orders uh, deliver orders. Uh, are delivered in a reusable pizza walk, case. Walk me through this. So I have a reusable pizza case. It's plastic, it sounds yeah. like. Uh, if I am a repeat customer, yeah. I can kind of exchange it every time. Is that no, how it works? Uh, usually it works like uh, the delivery guy mm. comes to customer, uh, gives pizza to him, mm -hmm. and uh, customer uh, gives back reusable uh, Immediately, yeah, immediately. Right away. Oh, yeah, okay, but, okay. Uh, we are ready, uh, but we can take it later. Okay. Uh, we are developing special features on our mobile app yes. to manage uh, okay. reusable cases. Interesting. A good way to have repeat customers too. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Let's talk about food waste. You guys sound like a very efficient business. You know, you get down to the data, the tech, and I'm sure you're applying that uh, into the production of the products as well. Um, how do you guys think about food waste? How 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 is that uh, controlled and managed at the business? Not just for the customers, but for your team. How does how do you approach that? Pizza is quite simple business comparing to maybe premium restaurants with mm. a huge menu. You guys have very simple ingredients. And, uh, yes, yeah. uh, simple ingredients, uh, simple process, mm. and uh, we have information systems. So we try to use uh, benefits of uh, our uh, process and mm. uh, information system to control everything and to reduce waste because it's uh, uh, it's not only about sustainability, it's about efficiency as well. Mm. It's about profitability as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to forecast our sales, mm -hmm. uh, to forecast our demand, and to meet the demand. How do you stay connected with all the global communities that you, your team has now built? Uh, social media is, is one yeah, answer. Yeah. Um, what are some other ways? So we are a modern company, young, very young company, and mm -hmm. we use all uh, benefits which uh, gives us f uh, today world. Okay. I mean, uh, IT services, uh, messengers, and uh, our IT system. It's an uh, online system. We, can, uh, we have special big screen in our uh, central office, mm. uh, and there is a map there, and uh, we can see uh, every order in online every second. Mm. So this map is uh, like a lot of uh, dots. This map shows how we control online our business. We can mm. see everything online. For example, we can see even uh, mood of our employees in every pizzeria because we mm. make special happiness rating. Mm. Uh, our employees uh, has have uh, special personal accounts in our system. Okay. We can interact with uh, every employee, and now we have more than 40,000 employees mm -hmm. around the world. Uh, I think technologies uh, uh, gives, give us an opportunity to be connected mm. with the world. Yeah, you can see how the franchise in Vietnam is doing. You can see how the franchise in the Middle East is doing. Yes, we can time. see yep. even uh, like speed of preparation okay. of every pizza wow. Fantastic. In, in every city in okay. Africa or in uh, north of Russia, in Europe. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Looking ahead, uh, what trends or opportunities do you see in quick service and the pizza industry that you're kind of spotting out already that you hope to um, kind of take advantage and, and leverage moving forward? Technologies could help us to make uh, some, to make our business simple, uh, to manage. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for example, fast food, QSR business uh, started with a very simple menu because uh, uh, the main challenge of fast food is uh, consistency of quality mm -hmm. and you need to make uh, processes more simple, menu simple. But uh, technologies could help us to make uh, consistency of quality and like, big menu at the same time. Mm. So I see uh, such trends as customization. When uh, people could customize everything in product, you could choose your ingredients, you mm. could, and uh, and control of ingredients of colors, for example. Okay. Colors, okay. Yeah, of course. I think it would be, it would be a big trend. Everyone's dyeing their hair these days. Now you can dye your pizza. 
Yeah. I think <laughs> that uh, we need to give our customers uh, an instrument okay. of control. For example, now we are developing uh, such instrument in our mobile app, which uh, help, which would uh, help our customers to control calories in every piece. We will not hide this information. Mm. We want to uh, especially make it transparent for customers. Actually. It's not a risk because uh, I think it's opportunity. Mm. Well, that wraps up our discussion about Dodo Brands, Dodo Pizza, Fyodor. I have one last question for you. It's your first visit here. You've been here less than 72 hours. You're here for a few more days. While you've been crossing the streets of Saigon, going to the, the Dodo Pizza stores and just talking to people, my question for you is what makes you curious about this country that you want to know more about? It doesn't necessarily need to be F&B. So I asked this question because on this show, we have had hundreds of guests mm -hmm. from all types of industries, real estate, technology, now pizza, manufacturing, and their answers are quite wide ranging. They want to learn more. So you're an expert in what you do. What are you not an expert in that you'd like to know more about to empower your next business? I educated as archaeologist. I okay. started as archaeologist, as scientist. Okay. And uh, I even worked in the Russian Academy of Sciences, archaeologist. Mm. And so I very, I'm very interested in culture and history. Mm. So of course, Vietnam is, has uh, great history. As CEO of the company, I need to know not only uh, like figures and business, uh, like sales and numbers. I need to feel the market. Mm. So sometimes I visit the market just to, just to feel it, just to work on the streets, yep. to see people. And I think it's very important uh, to, okay. underst to understand business. Very good. No, I like that perspective because sometimes as a, a CEO or a business director, you get too bogged down with the numbers. You, you lose your vision of everything yes. else. And sometimes you need that in order to have that perspective. So, well, very good, Fyodor. Thank you for that answer. Hopefully our, our show and everything you're, you're you're seeing here in Vietnam today can help answer those questions. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in for another episode of Vietnam Innovators. Uh, we've just had the CEO and founder Fyodor of Dodo Brands on the show. He's coming all the way from Dubai. Look out for more Dodo pizza brands popping up all over Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, and all over the country. 150 in the next three years. Maybe we'll have you back in three years and see if we've hit that mark. If yes, if no, why? We'll find out. Thank you so much, Fyodor, much. and uh, appreciate your time. And uh, have fun for the rest of your trip here in Vietnam. Thank you. All right. See you guys next time.